Jackson Radio Show. Okay, so I told you that I live in Maryland. And Maryland is literally like the East Coast version of California, or at the very least, it's turning into that. I'm going to break down several key factors that I think the rest of the country needs to be mindful of, because this is what our Democrat-controlled state has been doing to our wonderful state. Though we have a Republican governor, and hopefully, pray to God that we have a second term with Governor Hogan, these next hour, you're going to hear all the different issues that we are dealing with here in Maryland. I'm Liz Matori. I'm filling in for Kevin Jackson on his show on KJRadio.com. But yeah, so the number one one uh, I'd like to talk about is gerrymandering. Um, on Wednesday, the Supreme Court of the United States decided to hear the case that actually one of my friends is a part of um, about the gerrymandered, specifically the gerrymandered Congressional District 6. Um, there are, for your information, there are eight different congressional districts that make up Maryland based on our population. And of course, everybody has two senators on the federal level. But back in 2010, based on that census, um, Every 10 years that next year, in our state, the governor gets to draw up the lines. Like, literally, we have a very powerful governor here. So Martin O'Malley, our governor at that time, and the Democrat Party, the Maryland Democrat Party, my former employer, um, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for talking about it, but whatever, it's over. Um, They were like, you know what? Their goal has always been to just get rid of all Republicans, They want all Democrat federal delegation that Maryland sends to uh, Congress. As you know, maybe you know this, but I definitely will relate to you, is that Maryland is the northernmost southern state, southernmost northern state. Our history is so profound that, you know, people talk about the Union. We would have seceded from the Union if Lincoln did not shut down Annapolis and the State House. People wanted to secede. So, if anything, that history of Maryland is very much prevalent. And so we have the eight different districts, and CD6, which is Congressional District 6, was changed specifically to get rid of the Republican congressman. His name is Roscoe Bartlett, who used to be representing District 6. So by 2012... They changed the lines to bring the district all the way down from the the northern, you know, there's there's Garrett, Allegheny, Washington counties, uh, Frederick County, and Carroll County, which is what they consider western Maryland and central Maryland. And they brought that congressional district, chopped that in half, and brought some of it down to to where I live, Montgomery County, and then brought District 8, which where mostly was where I live, pulled that all the way up to the Pennsylvania border. So there's like, you know, Siamese twin districts on between the western and central part of Maryland. Only purpose, the only purpose was to get rid of the Republican. And following enough, Governor O'Malley admitted that that's what he did. So there is a Supreme Court case now that is questioning the validity, and actually they brought it on the grounds of the First Amendment, that their First Amendment rights in District 6 have been nullified, freedom of speech, expression, what have you, because of this partisan gerrymandering. And you know, everybody says that Republicans do it too. But whenever anybody tells you that, tell them, say, Liz Matori said that When Democrats do it, the lines are a lot more severe because they have to dig into highly populated areas like the Washington, D.C. area and Baltimore City and pull Democrat votes to negate rural and conservative votes. And so when I ran in 2016, I left the Democratic Party because of specifically because of the gerrymandering. When I traveled the district to research District 8 at that time, I'm running now in District 2, but in District 8, you realize how disenfranchised people got. 
because as I mentioned in District 8, for example, you have to drive from where I live in near DC all the way up to the Pennsylvania border. You're like, wow, people here totally have a different way of life there and vice versa. And on top of that, we have closed primaries here in Maryland. So the people who end up surviving these um, closed primaries tend to be the most left or the most right candidates, as was the case in District 8 in 2016. But the case that they're talking about um, this week and the Supreme Court specifically focused on D6. And Justice Kagan actually said, she's like, wow, like, if you literally look at the numbers, you purposely took out 360,000 voters and incorporated 350,000 voters. Each one flipped Republican to Democrat. I think it was a 60-40 split and they just swapped it. And she was like, how much more evidence of partisan intent do you need? And then you're like, yeah, what are we doing? Especially when it comes to our representative government. How do we how do we trust our government? Especially, I mean, again, like that's how I felt about the Democrat party here in Maryland is like, I can't trust you anymore. If you're willing, first of all, if you're claiming that you represent the people, you swear by it. This is what you do. You care about the black people and the brown people and the Latino people and the Asian people and the, you know, LGBTQ people and the questioning people and the transgender people and all that stuff. Well, yeah, you're all for the people except for when it counts where they get to choose who their representatives are. You want them, you want yourselves to choose who gets to represent us. We could talk about all the other lines because each one of our congressional districts is gross. Like the district that I'm running in too is actually the oldest gerrymandered district because prior to what, 2010, 2011, no, no, no. 2000, 2001 was the one that they gerrymandered District 2 out. Initially was represented by Governor Ehrlich, who before was congressman for District 2. Mostly covered uh, Baltimore County. But the Democrat Party in 2001, after the 2000 uh, census, they're like, oh great, we can change lines again. And so they basically carved out I think it was three and two and it looked like literally it's like it's like a blood splatter and sadly it goes around Baltimore County but they brought district two and now it kind of like whittles around Baltimore City through the county from the west side to the north side to the east side on the way through all the way up to Aberdeen um, through Harford and then down again through Dundalk Middle River all that Um, and parts of Anne Arundel and Howard County. So again, when you're like seeing and you're wondering why your representatives don't vote, don't represent you anymore, look at your own state's lines, not just for the federal positions, but also for your state level positions and your county level positions. I just went to a, a Republican women's club meeting today and They were saying that, you know, their county council really purposefully divided their district so that, you know, Republicans would never win in this district. I mean, we've gotten to that point. You know, people always ask, why are we so hyper-partisan? Why don't we get along? Not all of it, but most of it is because of the gerrymandering. Because our politicians have to be more extreme than not because they can be cantered, remember? Eric Cantor was one of the representatives in Virginia, and he was ousted by someone who is more right than he was because many people complain that he wasn't, you know, there all the time. But when you create these districts that are so like, they're like neon one way or the other, you literally have no reason to care about the moderate view. I personally think it's important, but these districts basically make your represent they make their representatives be hyper partisan in order to keep their positions. We could talk about term limits. We talked about term limits last week. 
you know, the reason why we have two years, two years, two years is because it wasn't supposed to be a career thing. But the other element to this is that in order to stay in office, these representatives all fundraise. And that's the only thing they have to do is because like, that's what they have. They, they have to fundraise to keep in their positions. And when you look at that, you're like, wow, they don't really care about us anymore. They are really only wanting to stay in office and how do they stay in office but they fundraise and so they now are again beholden to the people who are giving them big dollar donations and contributions which most of them are PACs and again who are they representing I know we've talked about gerrymandering but it goes from gerrymandering to partisanism to money and government all of it's related and I kid you not American citizens are the only ones that are going to stop it if we can I sure would like to try Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.